Hello, I'm Andy Oliver, the Minister of Pastoral Care for Portland First United Methodist Church. There was an early church leader by the name of Paul. Among other things, Paul started a bunch of churches throughout the Roman Empire, and he wrote a lot, and some of his writings became books of our Bible. And in one of those books, called Galatians, he wrote this, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. As has been pointed out by countless people through the centuries, Paul is saying that all are made equal by Christ's life, death, and resurrection. And Jesus Christ, by his loving actions for us and for all humanity and for the entire created order, all are made equal. We all equally participate in the tragedy of sin. And when we are in Christ, we are all equally saved. There is no hierarchy of better or worse. There are no more hierarchies in Christ Jesus. All social conventions of power have been abolished. By Christ, all must share equally in the responsibility of and caring for and participate in the joy of a church family spilling out into the world. There is no Jew or Greek. There is no value atta attached to one's ethnicity or race or culture or religious privilege or religious past or covenantal status, and no gatekeeping is necessary on our part. There is no stratification based on ability or mental health or productivity. There is no slave or free. All social conventions that promote unequal power are done, finished, obliterated. All economic systems that create win losers and winners, poverty or scarcity has been redeemed and all are set free in Christ. No male and female, how we divide the world by gender power has been broken in Christ. All this is about power. Who has the power to be a gatekeeper? And Paul says Christ and only Christ is the gatekeeper. And through his life, death, and resurrection, all the gates that humans keep shut against each other have been opened. The same holds in order, the same holds in order to become fully included in the life and leadership of the church. It's just Jesus. That's how we get in the door. That's how we arrange the chairs once we are inside the room, too. It's all based on Jesus. There is another scripture text in Romans 10, also written by Paul, which goes like this. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. There is no if you confess with your lips and are also a man, you shall be saved. There is no if you believe in your heart and also have a certain skin color, you will be saved. No, it's just Jesus. Humans constantly keep putting up boundaries that Christ took down. You can't be a pastor if you're a woman, some will say. Wow, when did gender get more powerful than Christ? You can't be a Christian and gay. Wow, how did sexual orientation get more powerful than Jesus? It's as if Jesus is rendered powerless by human physical attributes or social inequity. Like Jesus is going, well, I would like to bring Johnny into a saving relationship with me, but what's a savior to do? Johnny is gay. My hands are tied. No, either the grace of God given to us in Christ is more powerful than race and money or gender or even death itself or not. And if not, then why bother? One of the sad parts of the early church is that Paul himself pulled back from his words of grace, as did most of the early Christians, going backwards to the power inequities of the world. Paul had been the fiercest, most ardent defender who said, wait a minute. If Jesus really did teach us, die for us, is raised from the dead for us, and will return for us, then we should shape our common life around him and not around the social pecking order of inclusion and exclusion of the world. Paul took theology and applied it to sociology. He was one of the first to say, why do we add things to be saved when Jesus took them down? One of the saddest parts of Paul's leadership is that he went through the door of grace when it came to Jew or Greek, but then shut it behind him before slave or free man and woman also got into the room. And so Paul is the one who also wrote the words about how slaves should obey their masters and how women should be silent in the church, among other destructive words, that have literally justified the killing of people 
all across Christian faith. Paul just wasn't able to live out fully Jesus' love by the power of the Holy Spirit, and neither are we after 2,000 years of trying. This past year has been another year where America, and more importantly, the church, has been forced to come to grips with how racist we are, how there is a hierarchy based on race, inequity based on skin color or the shape of one's eyes or nose. The world makes money off of such distinctions, but the church is to be different. I was in a Zoom meeting with several other white people a few months ago. <clears throat> we were all church people across the nation, all claimed to follow Jesus, all confessed with our lips and believed in our hearts. And we were talking about how awful it was that police officers were killing black people and how awful it was that white people were calling police on black people just for sitting in a coffee shop or for telling a white person to leash their dog. And it occurred to me, oh, we think we're all not racist. Because we think that a racist is only someone who falsely calls the police on a person of color, or who beats up Asian Americans, or shoots black men for jogging down a road. And since we don't do any of that, we must not be racist. I want us to think of racism not only as a physically violent act, or an illegal act, or a sacramental act like burning a cross, but also think about racism as a filter that not only white people, but certainly all white people, carry within them and view the world. The filter of racism creates a value system. Who's good, who's bad, who's acceptable, and who's suspicious, and all white people carry one. We get confused and believe we don't have a racial filter, maybe because we're nice or voted for Joe Biden or give money to the NAACP or have a friend of a person of color, but none of that takes the filter away. At best, it might help us become aware that we have one. The sin isn't that we come out of our world with this built-in filter. The sin is that we go into the world wet from our baptisms with the filter still unnoticed. I have a quote up in my study that says, Privilege is not something I take, in which I therefore have the option of not taking. It is something that society gives me, and unless I change the institutions which give it to me, they will continue to give it, and I will continue to have it, no matter how noble and egalitarian my intentions. The church is the place where we tell the truth, that our world grants power and privilege based on an endless stream of ways we think about and divide up people. And the church, by the power of the resurrection, breaks apart those power arrangements to live in justice with all. Amen.